This is the American Forces Network, Europe.
extravehicular activity. The command ship Endeavour will be sending television pictures back to Houston's manned spacecraft center, although the pictures are not coming in yet. Did you say, Russ, all three men are now in their space suits. They're not on the cabin system. Okay. This is live transmission between the flyers and the ship. Yep.
171,000 miles. That's nautical miles. It puts it all about 196,000 miles above the earth. Working, working his way in his spacewalk along. Uh, we'll have to take back a minute, Houston. We're uh, turning on the 16 millimeter. We copy. Yeah, Things are going smoothly. 
Burton seemed to uh, have no trouble at all in recovering the film and bringing it back to the yeah. defense. Would you like to speak? Would you like to get all of it? <laughs> Very important film, of course. So important one to find it says. Looking into the pan camera safely inside. Pan camera safely inside. That's about 80 pounds of the uh, cassette. Beautiful job, Al, baby. Remember, remember, there's no hurry up there at all. We're heading back down alongside the service module oh, now. <laughs> Let's listen in. We're talking about how much fun all this is. Going back for the mapping camera cassette now. Mapping camera cassette about eight pounds. Of course, it's weightless up there, but it weigh eight pounds down there. Wooden's activities are very much like a, a man in water. He's making his way, uh, weightless of course, hand over hand as he moves along the grab rails okay. on the service model. We'll take a look at the field range center. Very good. Uh, 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 he's very rushed and he'll practice this underwater many times. Found he could do the job in 20 minutes. Nothing at the field range center. There's no back black paint missing. There's nothing obscuring the field of view. The glass is not cracked. Burton's checking on one of the scientific instruments. Not field of view. There's nothing in the way, Carl. It's we, perfectly clear. We copy your report, Al. Thank you. Okay. And as I look around, the mass spec is, uh, oh, looks like about... Quite in the cover, it looks like maybe it's the cover. The jam. Yes, in fact, it is the cover. It's jam. This is the voice of Al Burton outside the space trap. Roger, Al. We copy. That was most unexpected news. Uh, I can't tell really. I can't really tell from here, Carl. Houston's mission control. 
So it's a double benefit on this EDA or extravehicular activity. They're able to hear in and watch it.
and relayed to Europe via satellite by the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Our next scheduled coverage of the Apollo 15 mission will be this Saturday night when James Irwin, David Scott, and Al Warden splash down in the mid-Pacific. As you've heard, the astronauts had a problem with a mass spectrometer cover in the rear of the spacecraft, but apparently a very minor problem. Al Warden, who was out spacewalking, retrieved the two canisters of film from the mapping canister that was in the rear of the uh, space capsule and has retrieved them, taken them into the capsule where they will be packaged up along with everything else that's not tied down so that when the uh, spaceship re-enters the atmosphere Saturday that uh, there won't be anything loose flying around. Uh, the canisters will be secured. The film, the mapping films will be used to make a map of the moon, something that the geologists are very excited about. I'll return in news in just a moment. It's now 17 hours Central European time. AFN News, a summary from the wires of the AP and UPI. Here is specialist Harvey Powers. Good afternoon. As you probably just heard, Apollo astronaut Alfred Warden has left the command ship Endeavour on a 25-foot lifeline. He walked to the rear of the spaceship Endeavour, first spacewalk in deep space, about 200,000 miles from the planet Earth. He was walking on his hands to the rear of the spaceship where he retrieved two canisters of film used to photograph the moon when the Endeavour was in lunar orbit. Photographs to be used by scientists to make geological maps. Earlier today, ground controllers told the space trio that a scheduled mid-course correction would not be necessary. Capsule communicator Joe Allen said the Endeavour was so close to a perfect course that the astronauts were eligible for the Vasco da Gama Navigation Award. The Apollo 15 spaceship is now about 200,000 miles from Earth and is speeding homeward at nearly 2,000 miles an hour. Splashdown is scheduled Saturday night at about 9.45 p.m. Central European time. Are your dreams of success cloudy because you do not possess a high school diploma or college degree? Well, don't give up yet. Your base education office has a plan to help you with any goal you may have in mind. An example is Operation Bootstrap, offered by the Air Force. This program allows you to attend nearby colleges while in service. Other programs provide enrollment in off-duty classes of your choice. Your government may even pay all of your tuition costs if only one year is required for graduation. So remember, those visions of success don't have to be just dreams. Make them a reality with assistance from your base education office. Visit there soon. Uh, that was uh, Gemini 4, and it was Edward White. And 
Edward White uh, died four years ago in the spacecraft, uh, space program tragedy when the, uh, uh, the fire at uh, Cape Kennedy. But White spacewalk almost six hours or so ago, or six years ago, excuse me, was not televised. His progress could only be followed by mission control the air and ground. Today's spacewalk was televised, and Houston Control picked up a magnificent picture. Mission planners on this uh, Apollo 15 flight may have been a little surprised with the ease in which today's EVA was carried out. Actually, nearly an hour had been allotted for this, and Worden completed all the activities in about half that time. He uh, moved back along the service module, that portion of the, uh, uh, the big vehicle that uh, is attached to the blunt end of the command ship. He moved back along the service module for a distance of about 15 to 20 feet using handrails, hand over hand, with his uh, feet in the weightlessness of uh, space. Uh, moved back along, first brought uh, the uh, pan camera cassette back to the command ship hatch, then went back, retrieved the mapping camera, went back a third time to check on an instrument bay for the benefit of mission control to uh, see if things looked all right there during that uh, long period in which Apollo 15 was circling the moon. Everything did look fine, and uh, Worden now is back once again in the command ship with the cabin repressurized. NBC's coverage of the flight of Apollo 15 will continue after this message. Nine Americans have been released from captivity by the communists in Southeast Asia. One of them, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Morris Overly, tells why the releases were made. The best answer that we can come up with is to why have nine people been released? The answer we believe is that Hanoi is very sensitive to their world image. In 1967, they were accused of inhumane treatment, across the board inhumane treatment, and generally by the fact that they had paraded our men through the streets. We feel that the decision was therefore made to release some happy prisoners who had not been there very long in order as proof positive new people back here that they do have humane treatment. But I'm here to tell you that their efforts failed because our country can see through that sort of thing. Help American prisoners of war in Southeast Asia. For information, contact your local American Red Cross chapter. Apollo 15 and Houston's mission control is getting still another bonus on this EVA exercise. Worden is back inside the command ship now, and the flyers are once again transmitting live pictures back to Houston. This has not been on the schedule. The had, film hadn't been on the schedule, so they didn't have they don't have very good interior lighting in the cabin. So the pictures that are coming back are quite dark, although enough so that Houston control can see that they are pictures of inside the cabin of Apollo 15. This is the last major event on the, um, on the flight of uh, Apollo 15, although the families have always maintained that a space flashdown is the major event on any space mission. Uh, now that uh, today's extravehicular activity is over with, there will be some routine chores Consensus in the control center is that that was a reflection of lights in the cabin that you saw in the hatch window. That was the voice of Houston's mission control. Routine chores will occupy the time of the astronauts for this afternoon. Tomorrow they have a um, long sleep period. They try that uh, cosmic ray light flash experiment again in which they put on masks and um, give Houston a reading on light flashes they see in the darkness of their spacecraft. Then on Saturday, the big event, coming at about 4.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that is, flash down in the Pacific north of Hawaii. Great swellers in the near wind now in the low 70s uh, for Dave Scott, high 50s. At one time when Worden was 
doing his spacewalk. His heart rate was up to 130. Now, you heard Mr. Control say, down in the low 70s. It dropped even while he was doing his EVA. They kept a close monitor on that all the way through the EVA, and it was um, uh, very interesting how the heart rate did drop as, I guess, Gordon became accustomed to the tour outside the spacecraft. Now, it's very Mr. Rice in the cabin so the men can go back on the cabin environment and told not to face Once again, it was important to conduct uh, this EVA not as uh, some sort of aerobatic exercise, but to retrieve uh, vital film that was taken while the command ship was circling the moon. That film to be used by scientists on Earth in getting a better understanding of the moon and its properties. They'll be seeing uh, parts of the moon never before seen because much of the footage was shot on the far side of the moon. The flight of Apollo 15 going very well now. They, they do everything in nautical miles. That would be more statute miles, of course. About 196, something like that, statute miles above the Earth. Apollo 15, on the way home, all three astronauts now back in the command ship. The extravehicular activity, the highlight of today's program, successfully completed. You're listening. You've been listening to live Apollo 15 coverage provided by NBC Radio News and relayed to Europe by satellite. Our next scheduled coverage of the Apollo 15 mission will be on Saturday night when James Irwin, David Scott, and Al Worden splash down in the Mid-Pacific. Next AFN News, the world at 1800. We now rejoin the program regularly scheduled in this time period. Out of the last tone, it will be 18 hours Central European time. And a detailed summary of late news developments from the wires of the EP and UPI on this fifth day of August 1971. From the EFN Europe Central News Desk in Frankfurt, here is David Minot. Good evening. Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden successfully completes his spacewalk to retrieve films. A Swedish airline has denied a published report that it is involved in a plan to carry American POWs from Indochina. And the communist delegates at the Paris peace talks say the only way an Indochina settlement can be reached is by American acceptance of their seven-point peace plan. These are top stories in the world at 1800. Now details. Astronaut Alfred Warden has taken a spacewalk outside the Apollo 15 command ship and received two canisters of photographic film. The pictures were taken when the Endeavour was in lunar orbit. Once developed, they are expected to provide the basis of the most complete moon map to date. Warden, the only one of the space trio not to walk on the moon, had no difficulty maneuvering in the weightless condition. Indeed, his heart rate dropped once he got outside the capsule and began maneuvering toward the rear of the Apollo spaceship. He made two trips in less than 15 minutes and then asked Mission Control whether there were any other tasks he could perform before going back inside. One of the side missions was to check one of a number of scientific instruments attached outside the Endeavour. He found there was a minor problem in the cover of a mass spectrometer, but it is not expected to cause any significant difficulties. Earlier in the day, Warden, Scott, and Irwin were told their return course is so precise that a scheduled mid-course correction is not necessary. If everything continues to run smoothly, the three astronauts will splash down in the mid-Pacific Saturday night at 21.45 hours Central European time. AFN News will provide live coverage of the splashdown and recovery. At the top of the news... At the sound of the last tone, it will be 22 hours Central European time.
from the AFN Europe Central News Desk. At Frankfurt, here is David Elliott. Good evening. The State Department adds its denial to those repudiating Swedish reports of a deal to fly American prisoners out of North Vietnam. President Nixon asks for Senate approval of his draft extension request today. Astronaut Al Worden experiences no difficulty in accomplishing man's deepest walk in space. And Joseph Sisko finishes his peace mission to Israel. These are top stories in the world of 2200. Now details. Capping Apollo 15's remarkable scientific accomplishments. The command module pilot who circled the moon while David Scott and Jim Irwin performed their spectacular on the lunar surface eased himself out of the Endeavour moonship in full view of millions of Earth-bound television watchers and into the void 200,000 miles away from home. Using a series of handrails, the 39-year-old Worden, his feet dangling away from the vehicle into space, worked his way back along the Endeavour's exterior to a point 15 feet from the open hatch where Irwin was standing up and doling out a 25-foot-long tether that kept Worden connected to the Apollo, as well as providing him with communications and oxygen. Worden made that trip three times, retrieving two big canisters of film and taking a final look to check equipment. The two canisters contain a mile of film taken by Worden while he circled the moon, film which will enable scientists to accurately map more than one billion square miles of the lunar surface. In contrast to earlier spacewalk missions, Worden had no trouble with his and performed his tasks seemingly with no effort, and as he told Ground Control, he enjoyed it. The Apollo 15 crew now is set for a Pacific Ocean splashdown late Saturday, a few hundred miles north of Hawaii. Sound of the last tone, it will be 18 hours Central European time. The World at 1800, a detailed summary of late news developments from the wires of the AP and UPI on the 6th day of August 1971. From the AFN Europe Central News Desk in Frankfurt, here is David Minot. Good evening. The nation's unemployment rate increases, but not as much as had been expected. President Nixon travels to New England. The Apollo 15 mission continues to go well on the day before splashdown, and three more Army units receive orders to leave Vietnam. These are top stories in the world at 1800. Now details. On the moon mission, the Apollo 15 astronauts have been told conditions are good for tomorrow's splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. Their target site is 316 miles north of the Hawaiian island of Oahu, at 2146 Central European Time. Earlier today, CBS News reported that ground control awakened the astronauts, who are all Air Force officers, with a favorite tune of the Navy. Mission control shows the Navy song anchors away to wake up the all Air Force Apollo 15 crew this morning. So far as we know, it wasn't intended to tweak Scott Irwin and Worden. Just a reminder that Saturday's splashdown is approaching and recovery from the Pacific by an all-Navy crew. Good morning, Endeavour. This is Houston. Hello, oh, you guys. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. A little something special for your LMP from uh, your lunar liftoff flight director with young Ed Fendel on the symbol. How many in an attention right there? The astronauts today hold a news conference answering questions submitted by newsmen here and passed on by the capsule communicator in mission control. They will also photograph a lunar eclipse from space. Their command ship Endeavour is lined up well to enter a safe Earth re-entry corridor, so a mid-course correction schedule for tonight probably will be scrubbed. Steve Young, CBS News, Land Spacecraft Center, Houston. That news conference between Apollo 15 and Houston is scheduled to begin at 2050 hours Central European time, but will not be carried by major American networks and therefore will not be accessible to AFN for broadcast. Newsmen will question Scott and Irwin about their findings on the moon, about the operation of their moon buggy, and other related subjects. They will talk with Al Warden about the experiments he conducted while flying the command ship around the moon and about yesterday's spacewalk. Three joint Soviet-American space groups have competed, completed five days of meetings in Moscow and have adopted a number of unspecified recommendations for space cooperation. 
The U.S. Embassy in Moscow says the two groups represent the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the Soviet Academy of Science. Publication of the agreements is expected in about two months. AFN News, the flight of Apollo 15. This is Specialist Harvey Powers at the AFN Central News Desk in Frankfurt. The Apollo 15 astronauts, David Scott, Alfred Wharton, and James Irwin, are now on their way home. Splashdown in the Pacific is scheduled tomorrow evening, and today, with a few minor exceptions, it was a day of rest. One of those exceptions occurred a little more than an hour ago when Houston's Mission Control forwarded the Space Trio questions prepared by newsmen who've been covering the Apollo mission. With the report and excerpts of the news conference, here is NBC newsman Jay Barbary. During the past hour, with the Apollo 15 spacecraft streaking toward its home planet, 125,000 miles from Earth, astronauts David Scott, Alfred Ward, and James Irwin held a news conference. The questions asked them were submitted by reporters covering their flight here at the Manned Spacecraft Center and were called up to the spacecraft by capsule communicator Carl Henneyes. Here's a portion of that news conference beginning with a question for astronaut Alfred Wharton who made his first spacewalk out of Earth orbit yesterday. The walk was made 196,000 miles from Earth with Wharton picking up camera cassettes from the spacecraft scientific laboratory. Now the question. What runs through the mind of a man orbiting the moon alone? Well, I guess, uh, I guess the, the thing foremost in my mind uh, during those three days was uh, how I was going to keep up with the timeline and the flight plan and how I was going to keep track of uh, all the experiments we had going and where they were and, and uh, whether they were operating or not. And uh, I guess that was a very, very fast three days for me when I wasn't uh, looking at uh, the Super experiments. I was looking out a window and taking pictures. And it was a pretty grand three days. As a matter of fact, I, I guess I didn't really have, have much time to uh, give any thoughts to being alone out there. Question number 11, again for Al. You said after your spacewalk in a week you had stayed out longer. What was it like out there between the Earth and the Moon? And why did you come in so soon? Well, let me answer the last one first. Uh, I, I guess I didn't come in soon. I came in when the job was done. And uh, as a matter of fact, I made an extra trip back out uh, to take a look at the mapping camera. Now, as, as far as what I felt like when I went out there, we talked a little bit about it after Thank you. 